Coach, thanks for joining us again. Second year going in now. What do you feel like you learned in that first year that really laid the foundation and now gives you a chance to build upon? Yeah, good question. Honestly, there wasn't a, a ton of surprises, to be honest with you. I think I knew the passion of uh, the state of Louisiana about LSU baseball. That was lived up to the hype for lack of a better term i remember uh opening night you know kind of looking around and going like this feels like the super regionals right now which was awesome and i was like they won't show up tomorrow and then we had a day game and then somebody hit a double early in the game and it was really loud and i looked down and i was like man this place is full again and so that was awesome i mean relative to the league uh as good as you you would have thought um, I did think that going through it 10 weeks in a row is a lot different than beating a team a two out of three in a super regional and so uh, the greatest challenge and, and it's really uh, exciting and uh, motivating you know to, to come in on a daily basis to try to get us back to the top and uh, it's uh, easier said than done when we're playing the great competition but love it here love the state love the people and uh, really excited about where we're headed you talked about the people and you talked about being back on top everyone and I mean everyone from the guys painting the stadium here have you guys in Omaha this year as a coach I know you welcome expectations because you have them high for yourself what does the Omaha or bus mentality feel like to Jay Johnson? You know, I don't even think about it because we can't go to Omaha tomorrow. Um, I still really believe in process builds outcome. I think uh, there's nobody in the world that wants to be there in the middle of June than me. And uh, that's never changed, you know, as long as I've been a Division One coach. I think we have to impart on our players the self-discipline of the things that we need to do to make things like that or a national championship possible and I'll never deviate from that and that's my job is to stay focused on those types of things and help our players do that as well as far as like all the preseason and accolades and rankings and hype and player rankings it's just validation of two things it's validation of we have some players that have had some previous success that maybe are coming into their own and it's their time and then that we've recruited really well and both of those things are true and so um, it's exciting but it, it doesn't have anything to do with the play uh, I use it mostly to build the program going forward you know because the, the future LSU baseball players like to see that and it's great for them to see the things that are possible playing here you talked about the process and we've talked about the foundation starting this spring you've, you've now had two falls uh, you know these guys to some degree sure you get new players and we'll talk about the portal and the way you use that but do you feel like the foundation is there I know already you've said you still want to do a lot of teaching though with this group because it is every team's different right yeah I think uh, I really like the word foundation and you only have one chance to get that right and so there was so many more elements other than just winning which were important to doing what we're trying to do here and establishing that and I got to give the returning players a lot of credit the ones that are still here uh, have really embraced that bought into that and have done a good job acclimating there was a lot less drama as far as whoa this is a big change it's almost like now they're operating in this is all that they know and then for the new players whether they were freshmen last year or the freshmen or first year players this year relative to LSU baseball this is all that they know and so I feel like it's a lot more settled and it's allowed us to just kind of get to work and the work ethic of this group has been outstanding like that's what they can control and they're doing a really good job of that so far you talked about the returning players we, we don't necessarily need to go into them too much but you got one of the best out in the outfield but you have them sprinkled around the field I think that helps when you're bringing new guys in or bringing young guys along no question about it I think you know you're obviously referring to Dylan and him he's the best player in college baseball one of the best I've ever coached and that's with a lot of major league players and uh, certainly excited about you know him and this year and then what his career will be moving forward the things that I appreciate about them are the things that the people don't get to see of just the mental discipline the ability to get himself prepared the type of teammate that he is uh, holding players to a higher standard of how we do small things in practice like base running and just the positive impact he has outside of being the elite of the elite player and uh, I think that can only improve you know what we're doing going forward when you see a young player see that that's how that guy operates and then they start emulating that now it just has a positive effect on everybody let's talk about some of the new guys the transfer portal you, you've said from day one when we met you it's not going to change so I need to figure out how to utilize it I think you've done a pretty good job at that Paul Skeens is a guy that everyone has on their radar now coming from Air Force 
how did you realize or utilize year one of the portal to understand this is why I need to be this aggressive and this is kind of how I can supplement my roster. What did, what did you learn, I guess, and then try to exploit with the portal? Yeah, I think every decision I make in recruiting is, is it going to positively impact our team and our program? And I really look at 2022 and, I, and I'll pose the question to the average LSU baseball follower. What would 2022 look like without Jacob Berry, Riley Cooper, Eric Reiselman, Bryce Collins, and Tyler McManus? I don't I wouldn't even want to go there you know so those guys had such a positive impact on that team and then moving forward okay where did we feel like we needed to improve to contend for the top of the top Omaha National Championship uh, starting pitching the pitchers did a great job last year I'll be the first to, to step up for them in that but when you're talking about at a national championship level you have to have guys be able to get into the fifth the sixth sometimes in the seventh inning and then it allows your bullpen to be better it simplifies the weekend um, so we went out and we got Paul Skeens, uh, Thatcher Hurd, Christian Little. And then when you look at where were we, what did we need to replace? I mean, Jacob Berry, first college player drafted, Cade Doty, uh, second round pick, one of the best players in the SEC. Tommy White was available. He was the best player to fit that need. We were really light on just infielders in terms of numbers. And so to be able to snag a guy like Ben Napole, the proven college player late to help us with depth, I think my point in all this is is there's going to be a reason for why we do everything. I am not a it's all portal recruiter. The answers to how we replace like Dylan Cruz next year are the freshmen that are in the program right now. Not one for one, but Paxton Kling, Jared Jones, Gavin Gidry, Brady Neal, Ethan Frey. Like those guys have a chance to be really, really good players. And so you'll continue to see a mixture, but all those decisions are just about what's best for us. And this is something that we don't really talk about with baseball as much as we do with football, certainly, and, and probably don't talk about enough with basketball, but how, how much are you re-recruiting guys and making sure that the guys that you have on your roster are happy with their roles and what they're doing? Because this is now a grass is greener somewhere else and they have the opportunity to go type situation in NCAA. Just like you're getting kids, other coaches are like, hey, if I can get a guy that's not playing at LSU, maybe I mean, maybe I need to court him. Yeah, and you know what? Um, that happened. I mean, literally this summer, I had to make a trip to the Cape Cod League because another program was trying to steal one of our players. And I mean, everybody might think I went up there to see somebody else. No, I went up there to see one of our players. And um, yeah, I mean, I can't, we won't do that. I can't speak for other programs. But, you know, for me, there's a thought of, hey, you're re recruiting them. I actually don't like that term. Okay. We're going to invest in their development every single day, whether you're player one or 35 on the roster. And our players know that. And so, hey, they may not be getting everything they want, but I think they would tell you they're getting what they need to advance their career as a player and as a person. And that's my philosophy with it. There's guys that won't be maybe where they want to be to start the year that will be there in the middle of the year, that will be there in the end of the year, that'll be there on opening day next year. And I think um, we're just going to kind of keep operating that way. Yeah, don't give them a reason to look somewhere else. Keep them happy at home. Let's talk about your staff. Uh, new staff, Wes Johnson, Josh Jordan, you, you're keeping the Jays and, and <laughs> guys like me uh, having a, a tough time and Mark Wanaka, Wanaka back again. Uh, let's, let's start with the pitching coach because he's a guy that I've seen it, you know, just the way that he interacts with the guys out here really has a potential to, to kind of unlock that next level of a lot of your guys. Yeah, I mean, when I, I talk about Coach Wes Johnson, it's not the best pitching coach in college baseball. It's the best pitching coach in all of baseball. And I just love talking about his skill set. He's very well known. He was very progressive on the front end of the the analytics and, and the science of, of how the body moves and pitching as that started to enter baseball, uh, but it's a lot more than that. I mean, it's the ability to break all that stuff down and translate it to the pitcher in a way they can use it to be successful in the game. It's the energy in which he shows up with, the ability to communicate, uh, just it's, it's complete skill set as a coach. And um, I almost had him last year when I first came here and, uh, you know, through uh, 
uh, unique circumstances, the opportunity presented again, and really happy he said yes, and our pitchers will definitely benefit from that. And Josh is going to work with the catchers, I believe, and, and, and some defensive stuff, but you're going to get a little bit more involved in it. Let's talk about Josh first and what you found he's bringing. I know he's a tireless recruiter like yourself. Yeah, I mean, no different than Wes. Like, when I'm filling a spot on my staff, I want to, you got to get one of two people. You got to get the person that's the best at what they do, and I would put Wes in that category. And I would put Josh in that category from a recruiting standpoint. But you got to get a person. If you can't get that person, you got to get a person that has a burning desire to be, to want to be the best at their particular job or the job that you need them to do. And this guy's work ethic's insane. I mean, it's by far of any coach I've ever had the best I've ever seen. And um, you know, his uh, ability to relate with people, connect with people, you know, open up our recruiting to this region of the country that was really important. Um, yeah. And just his ability to be available uh, to our players and to recruits uh, to set us up for success on the recruiting trail. Uh, the catchers is the position group that he's working with, just doing a tremendous job. And Mark Wanaka, uh, the third paid coach now, is a big deal in NCAA baseball and softball. I'm sure he's happy to have that. You've had him with you for so long. Uh, I guess just kind of speak to what he does with the outfielders and, and the chance to really work with some of the game's best. Yeah, Mark's, uh, you know, we've been friends for a long time, uh, been uh, colleagues for a long time. My whole Division One coaching career, he's been on my staff. And you know what we're known for is offense, and um, we just we've been together so long. There's never any mixed messages to our players. We're very much in sync with that, and have developed a very good working dynamic of how we get the information to the player in a way that they can utilize it in the game. And so he's incredibly valuable to what we're doing on the hitting side, the scouting side, the outfield side, and um, you know very very. Uh, big contribution to our team last year and he's off to a good start working with these new players we have as well. I think when we talked before you said you're gonna maybe get a little bit more involved with the defensive infield is that still true? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what did you realize All right, I need to do this or why did you realize I need to do this? You know I think you know as the head coach you're you're talking to the team all the time and I, I'm so involved in the offense and the hitting and base running and bunting like when you start adding all of that up I didn't want my voice to get lost in any of these areas, so I thought, and this goes back to my time at Arizona, you needed to have an infield coach because that's such an important area of the team. And then um, we didn't perform as well defensively as uh, I would think we should early in the season. I do think we got a lot better as the year went around, but I felt like um, you know taking ownership of that, responsibility for that, diving into it with a Jordan Thompson, Tommy White, the guys competing at second base uh, would really be a good thing for our team and we've worked extremely hard I think we'll be better uh, but those guys will tell you that, that they're prepared and they're playing with confidence and uh, I'm looking forward to see the that part of our game improve this year you talk about defense let's talk about the offense because I think that's what everybody you know the powerhouse you guys have even labeled you know the program that to some degree a lot of a lot of people expect a lot of pop out of these bats fall ball I know we're starting spring now what are your expectations offensively for this well, I think, you know, it's going to be a, a fun year in terms of competing. I think I saw something like of the top 100 um, draft prospects. We're facing nine pitchers in our, in our 30 SEC games, which is that's awesome. And sometimes good pitching will beat good hitting. I think what I want to see is a, a complete, well-rounded attack of power, solid hitting skills, ability to move the baseball, control the strike zone, really all the same tenants that we always want to be good at. Um, I think we have some unique dynamics to this team where you have a guy like Trey, a guy like Dylan Jordan, they've had so many college at bats, like it's their time, you know, the, you know what you have there and they're going to excel. I think with some of the younger players that are supremely talented, how quickly they take those mature and professional at bats will determine our ceiling as an offense. And then there's another layer of players that maybe weren't Dylan or Trey last year that were in the program. How much did they improve? And so just making it a team effort so it doesn't fall on somebody hitting a homer or uh, you know one player and, and being well-rounded. I think we were last year. I, 
I would say we were one of the best offensive teams in college baseball. Uh, I think this team has a chance to be very much like last year's team. We just want it to be a little bit better based on the experience of some of the guys that are playing. Did you add some of the speed that you felt you were lacking last year? A couple things with that, um, you know, I think the, the stolen base thing is, is kind of interesting. You always have to assess the risk reward. I look at our percentage of success more than I do um, how many total we get. Um, when you have good hitters like, you know, I mentioned Jacob Berry, Kay Doty, Dylan Cruz, you don't want to run them out of an extra base hit that's going to score multiple runs. Um, we were only thrown out twice stealing last year. The other times that were caught out were when a guy would try to advance on like a ball in the dirt. So I think we can add some of that. I think uh, the speed thing's unique though. It provides infield hits for you, which continues innings, and it really shrinks the field on defense. And so when you look at a late inning defense with, you know, Dylan Cruz, Paxton Kling, Josh Stevenson, it makes you feel pretty good that if the ball's up in the air, as long as it's not over the fence, it's going to get caught. And um, so I think it's going to benefit us in a lot of ways. You talked about your schedule. Uh, just, I think, a phenomenal schedule. You, you have a, a road tournament early, which gives you a little taste of competition. Um, you start at Texas A&M. You're, you're on the road. Uh, I believe again at Ole Miss, you know, defending national champs. And then you have two super huge series against Arkansas and Tennessee here at home that, that this place will be nutso about. Just what do you like about your schedule? Uh, I know you, you're going to talk about week one, but but what, but big picture, do you like the way it kind of lays out and gives you challenges along the way? Yeah, I mean, yeah, everything's done forward. with a Can't purpose, wait to see the know, Tigers out on the diamond. Coach Jay Johnson, thank you so much for your time. All the way through yeah. uh, to put your team in the best position for uh, the postseason and RPI and those types of things. Fortunately, and maybe unfortunately, sometimes the SEC takes care of your RPI for you, uh, which is awesome. But, you know, I, I think um, the Round Rock Tournament will be great. Um, you know, it's, it's on a neutral site, uh, which, you know, Omaha is obviously a neutral site. It's playing power five teams and a good mid-major team. So you're kind of simulating a regional almost. Uh, playing a road game at Texas uh, early I think is great. Uh, when you talk about who we're going to play on the road in the SEC, we'll have had a legit game where we'll have kind of had some sense of what, what it's going to be like. And then with, with the schedule, I think once you – make it through the season and you put yourself in a position of postseason, there'll be nothing you'll see in the postseason that we have not seen. And I think that's so valuable. Um, this experience is the best teacher. And, uh, you know, a lot of our players want to be major league players. I mean, we're facing major league pitching, you know, a lot of in a lot of games this year. So I think it's a great schedule, and I know our players are looking forward to it. Yeah, we're all looking forward. Can't wait to see the Tigers out on the diamond. Coach Jay Johnson, thank you so much for your time. You got it.